Hello, I'm Ken Cage. In this video lecture, we're going to be looking at how to write an essay. First of all, let's consider exactly what is an essay. An essay is basically a short, written composition which focuses on a single subject. It's based on research. So in order to write an essay, you first have to gather information on a particular topic, assess the information you've gathered, and then formulate your opinion on the subject in order to answer the question which has been set. Now, during this information gathering and assessment process, you're going to come across different ideas on the topic. Formulating your own opinion is based on your understanding of what the different authors say. In other words, you need to understand all sides of the debate on the topic and then present a clear, logical case for the opinion you have formulated on that topic. Let's have a look at an example of a typical essay question. Observational learning is an important means of socialization for children. Discuss the content of popular primetime television shows. What are the patterns of behavior that children may learn as a result of watching primetime television? So if you had to answer this question, you would firstly have to gather material that various experts have published on the effect of television programming on children. This could be from various disciplines, for example, psychological, educational, sociological. Once you've read widely and understand all sides of the debate, you have to then formulate your own opinion on the topic and present what you think the patterns of behavior are which affect how children behave. The grade you get for the essay is going to depend on whether you can convince your marker that you have read widely enough to have a clear grasp of all the different perspectives on the subject and that you have synthesized what you have read into a coherent point of view or case which indicates where you stand in the debate. In other words, it presents a personal view of the topic under discussion. Now, with any big project, it's always best to break it down into smaller tasks. In the process of writing an essay, we can break the process down into the following steps. Step one is to analyze the assignment question. Before writing an essay, it's best to start off by analyzing the assignment question first so that you know exactly what it is you're being asked to do. In step two, then, we'll move on to how to do the research. Step three looks at how to write a thesis statement, and when we've done all our research and we have our thesis statement, we can move on to step four, and that is start organizing the essay. In step five, we can start writing our first draft, and once we have a draft, step six is to get some feedback and then make changes based on that feedback. And then finally, in step seven, we make revisions to our draft and write our final essay before submitting it. So, first off, let's have a look at how to analyze the assignment question. When analyzing the question, there are three tasks to which you must pay attention. Firstly, you need to locate the task words in the assignment question. Then you have to make sure that you understand what those task words are asking you to do. And finally, you need to identify the key topics in that particular assignment. So, firstly, you must locate the task words. Often it's very easy to find them. Sometimes the task words will be things like analyze, evaluate, define. Here are some examples of typical essay questions which you may encounter. The first one. Analyze the problem of teenage binge drinking and evaluate three possible solutions. Here it's very easy to find the task words. We have analyze and we have evaluate. Let's have a look at another sample question. Evaluate the types of accounting information most companies routinely use. Again, the task word is up front at the beginning, evaluate. Now, in some essay questions though, you will find the task word isn't quite so obvious. Let's have a look at this example. Discuss the political strategies of the predominant forms of government among the Italian city-states. Which was the most successful and why? Right. Here you have to do three things. Firstly, you must discuss the strategies. This means give a description of the different strategies that were current at the time. 
the which was the most successful part of the question is asking you to evaluate which strategies you think worked best. And the why part of the question requires you to give reasons for your evaluation. Here's another example of how the task words may not always be that easy to identify. Let's read it. Pup's Blue Ribbon Beer has recently lost market share. What happened at Pup's and why? How can this problem be solved? Now the crux of this question is what happened at Pup's and why? What it's asking you to do is look at the problem and assess the cause. And once you've discussed what happened and why, the second part of the question then kicks in. How can this problem be solved? What you're being asked to do here is to evaluate the situation and give recommendations to solve the problem. Now, there are a large number of task words. These include evaluate, assess, compare, contrast, criticize, define, describe, discuss, examine, explain, many, many more. So, for example, if you are asked to discuss a topic, your answer must explain the topic or concept and then give details through supporting evidence, through examples, points for and against, explanations for the facts put forward from various points of view. Whereas if you are asked to criticize a topic, you must point out the flaws or weaknesses in an argument or idea. But also you are expected to indicate any positive aspects of the subject in question. Your answer mustn't be biased, and you should give a balanced answer. Any decision or judgment you make must be supported with evidence. Now the next step in your assignment is to analyze the task. You now know what the task words mean, so you must make sure that you know what you're being asked to do. What kind of information will you need to answer the question? For example, if you are asked to analyze or discuss a topic, you need to look at how the topic can be broken down into its essential parts. In the particular essay about Pabst beer that we looked at, you're going to be asked to examine the facts of the situation and then offer an, an analysis of what you think went wrong. Based on that analysis, you are then asked to propose a solution to the problem. Now, a common task word is to analyze a topic. Let's have a look at our earlier example about teenage binge drinking. If you are asked to analyze and evaluate, in the first part of the question, you're expected to look at the various aspects and causes of teenage binge drinking. You have to ask questions about teenage drinking to uncover the facts about binge drinking among this group. Using the six WH questions is always a good start. What? Who? Where? When? Why? And how? Now, ask these questions relating to the topic and do the research for each question to find the answer. Let's have a look at some examples. What is binge drinking? Find a definition. Who is involved? What age group of teenagers indulge in this pastime? Where do they drink? When do they drink? Why do they drink? And how can we solve this problem? These are just some of the questions that can be generated. There could be more than one question for each particular trigger word. Now that's a start in analyzing the social problem and answering the question. As far as the question goes, you must be aware that there are two types of questions we need to ask in an analysis. Surface questions and underlying questions. So, in our example, the surface questions will be the questions which basically provide factual information. What is binge drinking? Who is involved? Where does it occur? When does it occur? And how big a problem is this? The underlying questions will require some analysis of the facts that you uncover. Why do teenagers indulge in binge drinking, for example? Or why is it important to solve this problem? Or how is binge drinking different from other types of drinking? The second part of the question, evaluate three possible solutions, 
will require you to read up on what solutions have been proposed, both nationally and internationally, and to select three, and then give reasons why you think each possible solution is valid or not. Your judgment has to be based on both your own opinion as well as the views of experts in the subject. So the first thing is to find all the questions which are embedded in the assignment question. These will guide you through answering the assignment. Okay, so now we have analyzed the question and you know what information we need to uncover, it's time to do the research. There are basically two types of research. Firstly, there is first-hand research, where you go out, talk to people, conduct surveys, you make observations, you generally gather information in the real world. The second kind of research is second-hand research, where you go to the library and you look at course materials, books, journal articles, and even on the internet. Now, when you are doing first-hand research, that is things like interviews, uh, surveys, observations, etc., it's very important to prepare ahead of time. Take notes during the research gathering phase and have a clear idea about what information you need to find. For example, if we go back to our answer on teenage binge drinking, who could you interview? Who could you survey? What could you actually observe? When you're doing second-hand research, you're looking at the results of first-hand research that other people have done. For example, information in your course material readings, in books, journal articles, databases, internet sources, etc. Just a quick word about internet sources. Be, be very careful of what you use from the internet. Because the internet is unregulated, anyone can put anything onto it. You have to be sure that the information you are getting online is credible. To find out whether the information is credible, take the author's name and do a search in Google. If the author has credibility, you should be able to find other publications of his or hers as well as finding out which university or institution is affiliated to. If you can't find this information, be very wary of using anything that he's posted on the web. Now, if there's no author, only use information which is posted on a credible organization's website, like a university or a government department. When you're doing your research, always remember that the better the quantity and the quality of evidence you present, which supports your claim, the more you can depend on it. A good researcher is an active reader. You need to have a pen or pencil in your hand whenever you are reading your source materials. You have to stop often to gather your thoughts. This system of responding to what you are reading is a good way to make notes about what you are reading. On the screen now, you will see one way of setting out the notes you take as you are reading. At the top, We'll put source information, the author, the date, the title, all the publication details. In other words, all the information that you're going to need later when you complete your reference list. The rest of the page is divided into three columns, where you can record the page number where you obtained the information, a summary of the information, and your response to this information. In the summary column, you'll summarize in your own words the information from the source you are reading. Now, when you are writing a summary, there are four basic rules which you must remember. First of all, a summary needs to be accurate. You must report what the author says, not what you think the author says or what you think the author should be saying, but what the author actually is saying. Secondly, you need to be objective. You need to take a neutral position, stand back, to whatever the author is saying. You are conveying the author's ideas, not yours. Thirdly, you need to make sure that the summary is cited. That means that you are including any information that you will need to give references in the final essay. And finally, you need to make sure that your work is translated. Now, I don't mean translated into another language. I mean that you've taken the material that the author has said, summarized it in your own words and using your own patterns of thoughts. Now, these are the things you need to remember when you are making those summary notes. 
In the third column of your notes, you'll put your response to what the author is saying. How you react to the source author's material. One way of responding to source material is to ask questions, to challenge old beliefs, to create examples, to think about cause and effect, to apply this to your own focus and make connections between this source and other sources that you may have read. Another way to respond is to evaluate it. What do you think the strengths and weaknesses of the source material are? If you take time to make good summary response notes, you'll find that writing your first draft later on is going to be much, much easier. Okay, now we've done the research and we're ready to go on to step three of writing the essay. And that is figuring out your thesis statement. The thesis statement is the heart of the essay. It's the central message you want to put across encapsulated in one or two sentences. It's the main idea that you want your reader to understand after reading your essay. Okay, so let's take a few minutes to look at how to write a thesis statement. It's set up in three clear stages. Firstly, you need an arguable statement of opinion. You might think of it as saying, in this essay, I'm claiming that, and how you would finish that sentence. Let's have a look at an example. Lower highway speed limits are needed. This is an opinion. It's not a fact. It's an opinion. And other people may have different opinions about highway speed limits. The second part of the thesis statement is think about what elements of support are going to support your opinion. Think of why you believe the claim you are making. And so the elements of support could be part of your sentence which flows from your thesis statement. Because, reason one, reason two, etc., or you can think of it in terms of what are the broad concepts which you need to discuss. So in our example, we could say lower highway speed limits are needed because lower speed limits save lives and protect the environment. Now, the third part of the thesis statement is to think about the antithesis. The antithesis is the opposite point of view from what you are proposing. And it's often a phrase in your thesis statement that begins with although. Let's have a look at an example. You might think, what are the opposite points of view for why stricter speed limits should be introduced? Well, perhaps it's costly, uh, it's difficult to monitor, to enforce. So these are the elements that are going to go into your although phrase. So you might come up with something like this. Although enforcing lower highway speed limits is difficult and costly, lower highway speed limits are needed because they save lives and protect the environment. And that is an example of a complete thesis statement that you could come up with. You can see that it has all three parts, an opinion statement, the elements of support, and an antithesis. Let's have a look at another example. Here you can see the three elements of a thesis statement very clearly. Although primary school language programs are expensive to develop and maintain, foreign language education is important because it aids cognitive development and ultimately contributes to global understanding. Now, in this thesis statement, we can clearly see that the opinion is that foreign language education is important. The elements of support are that it aids cognitive development and it contributes to global understanding. And the antithesis is that these programs are expensive to develop and to maintain. So let's practice writing a thesis statement. Let's ask the question, should school leavers do some form of national service when they leave school? Firstly, think, what is your opinion? Yes or no? Then, what are the elements of support you can give to support your position? And finally, what are the counter-arguments to your opinion? Here's an example of a thesis statement to answer this question. Although civil liberties groups maintain that national service is a curtailment of freedoms and civil rights, national service is necessary in New Zealand because it teaches young people self-discipline and allows them to make a positive contribution to the growth of the country. 
Now, if you have the opposite point of view, the thesis statement could easily be twisted. And here we have the example. Although some people believe that national service teaches young people self-discipline and allows them to make a contribution to the growth of the country, national service is not desirable in New Zealand because it curtails freedoms and violates the civil rights of citizens. Okay, so now we know how to construct the thesis statement. And we can move on to step four of writing the essay, and that is to think about the organization. The three main points of an essay are the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. Now, in the introduction, there should be three things happening. Firstly, you need to set up the general context of your topic. You may wish to give background information about the topic, or you may wish to explain the topic's significance. You might ask intriguing questions to get your reader involved. The second thing the introduction needs to do is to indicate the general structure that the essay will follow. And finally, you need to present your thesis statement. Your introduction could run into two or three paragraphs, but try and keep it as brief as possible. Now, all that the introduction is doing is giving a preview of what is going to follow in the essay. So the introduction starts from a very general, broad perspective of the topic and works its way down to a specific thesis statement, point you are trying to make in that essay. Let's have a look at a practical example of an introduction. This introduction has two sentences which set the context. Approximately 7 million Japanese, over 30% of the country's population, are attempting to learn the English language. Unfortunately, problems with English language education in Japan inhibit the language learning process. Now, those two simple sentences set the context and tell us in a nutshell what the essay is going to be about. The next thing the introduction should explain is the structure of the essay. You might say something like this. This essay investigates these problems and suggests how educators can make advantageous use of Japanese culture in the English language classroom. This leads to a discussion of changes required from the Minister of Education. So in those two sentences you can see how the essay is going to be structured. And then the final part of your introduction is the thesis statement. Right, let's read this one. Although limitations in resources pose daunting challenges, changes are needed in theory and in practice in order to better facilitate the learning of English in Japan. Now, together, those three elements, context, structure, and thesis statement, form the introduction to your essay. Key questions you need to think about when planning your introduction are, how can I lead my reader into the topic? What is my essay going to do? How am, I, am I going to compare or am I going to contrast? Am I going to explain or define? And finally, what point am I making about the topic? What is my thesis statement? The second part of your essay is the body, and this is the largest part. This is where you put in the paragraphs which support your thesis statement. You offer evidence. You cite facts, statistics, data, research findings. You might even appeal to authority. All this information will build your argument. A good place to start organizing the body of your essay is with the key questions you wrote down at the beginning of the process. Remember the WH questions? Look at the surface questions and the underlying questions. Review those questions and arrange them in a plan with one question per paragraph. Now, it's always best to have a plan before you start writing. You can make changes to the plan as you go along if you discover a better way, or if you want to change the focus of your argument. Okay, so let's have a look at how the binge drinking essay could be organized. Now, while you are planning this organization, it's important to remember that you must guide your reader through the essay. Don't keep your organization secret. It's not a murder mystery novel. Use phrases like, 
it is important to define these terms. One, of the exam one example of this is, and look at statistics will clarify these points, the first reason is, etc. These phrases help lead your reader to the information that you're going to present. Now the third part of your essay is the conclusion. The conclusion must give the reader a sense of closure. You must restate your thesis and reiterate the implications and significance of the argument. You want to end your essay strongly and positively, often looking towards the future. Let's have a look at an example of a conclusion. First, we start by restating the thesis. Although inequalities can be perpetuated through the use of computer technologies, these inequalities need not be reinforced by educators. Next, we visit the main points again. Through the use of a social constructivist theory of learning and the development of essential skills, it's possible for technologies to promote positive social practice. And finally, we indicate the significance and closure of our topic. Educators must continually ask whether the use of technology in the classroom benefits some people at the expense of others and reinforces existing power relations. In the end, we must always find ways to ensure that technologies benefit all and actually serve to generate a society based on equality. Right, now once you have an organisation in place, You've reached step five of the essay writing process, and this is the drafting step. Drafting is simply the process of creating a logical flow of information from the notes that you have made. If you've taken good summary response notes in the beginning, this stage should be very easy. Okay, so the essay is drafted. It's now time to get a response. It's important to hear what other people have to say about what you have written. You can visit a student learning centre for feedback, or you can work with a study partner from your course on a I'll read your assignment, you read mine basis. You can ask a friend to give you honest feedback. And if all else fails, you can put the essay aside for a few days and then look at it with fresh eyes later on. Once you've got that feedback, it's time to make revisions. There are four possible stages in revision. You can add, you can subtract, you can move, and you can change. Now, some questions you might ask yourself when you're thinking about what you might add are, do I need more evidence? Do I need to explain a point more thoroughly? Do I need more descriptive details? Most of the answers to these questions are yes. When you're considering what to subtract, on the other hand, look for irrelevant details, off-the-topic wonderings, unnecessary information, Examples which aren't that convincing and are actually weak evidence. Also, you may need to move information when the order of the information is illogical or confusing. Would the thesis have greater impact somewhere else in the essay? Could any information in the introduction or the conclusion be moved into the body of the essay? And finally, things may need to be changed when another word could better portray the meaning that you're trying to get across. Or another example may be stronger to illustrate a point. Or another source may be more credible. Well, hopefully this video lecture has taught you the basics on how to go about writing an essay which is going to get you an A. Stick to the seven steps that I've outlined, and if you need assistance, go to your student learning centre. Let's finish off and see what some students have to say about writing essays. Well, an essay is important because it allows you to get your opinion across to your marker, your lecturer. I think the first step is to really look at the question and see what is the question asking you? What, do you, what does it want you to answer? And then go away and research. Find out what the first steps are, make notes, make a mind map, and then go from there. Writing essays is not all that complicated, it's just a matter of getting down what you think onto the paper. Well, in my opinion, you firstly need to understand what the question is asking, because if you do not know the gist of a the question, then you are going to go wrong from the beginning till the end. So the most important thing for me in essay writing is under firstly understanding the question. The process to follow for an assignment or an essay, I think would be first of all to go to the question that the, um, that's been assigned and really just have a really good look at the question, um, perhaps do some brainstorming and just um, really concentrate on what it is that the lecturer wants you to answer. Um, 
and to keep going back to that. So I think that's a, the most important thing in the beginning of the process. Um, there are several important things as far as I'm concerned. The first one is how to make a APA referencing because it's very unlikely for you to have the good result without proper APA referencing. So, yes, so I think the rep APA referencing is quite important for the first year students, especially for the students whose uh, background is not um, English speaking. Going over the sentences and making sure like with the paragraphs that each sentence at the beginning seems to correspond to what the paragraph is going to be saying. And, um... Writing an essay can be very difficult, I think if you don't know where you're going. But to just reduce it to simple steps. It's much like talking, just in pen form. Just reduce it, reduce it to the simplest parts. You're not writing 1,500 words, you're writing six paragraphs of 200 words, plus a little bit more. The structure of the essay essentially has three parts, which is an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. So in your introduction, you basically state the purpose of the essay, what it will be about. It's sort of an opener. For the reader. Now in your body that's where you will discuss the points that you have made and you will address the issues that you have introduced in the introduction and from that you will draw your conclusions at the end. You must be aware that each paragraph should have only one my idea um, which is not allowed to put so many ideas into one paragraph because that will make the paragraph look so long. Essays are really important at university I think because they are a good example of what you're learning in class. Um, I think it's really important for the students to put things into their learning into their own words so that they, um, they know that they're really understanding what's going on, what they're learning in class. How to use the um, database in the library, uh, that's the first uh, important task for, for me. Yeah. And in addition to this, I think read some more ideas, read the past research reports that could be the, another way, looking people how they conducted their research and find some hints, whether their hints fit you or not. If a student has to do research, I think it's a good idea to have a look at what information the lecturer has given the student first, um, some basis on where to go. For instance, with the library they might have some electronic resources that they would go into to check journal articles. Um, go to the library and, and have a look there. They do a lot of courses on um, how to access certain resources, how to find books and articles and that sort of thing. Um, and I think brainstorming, talking to other students about where they're getting their information from, um, are all good ideas for how to begin the research process. Research is about understanding and finding out what other people have understood first before getting your own opinion. Research doesn't mean getting rid of your opinion, it just means going out what's happened before, finding out what happened before you, what other people have said about it. Go through as many research sources as you can, but I would generally advise going through academic journals as well as your books to not concentrate too much on books. I would suggest that you go to books to get things like definitions and um, previous studies, but for current data that you would like to use in an academic essay, I would strongly recommend that you go to our databases and from there search for journal articles on research that has been done in your particular essay topic.